Now that we have learned about descriptive statistics, the next important branch of statistics is inferential statistics. It is used to reach conclusions that extend beyond the data alone. For instance, given a sample, you can try to infer what the population might think or to see if the results of an experiment occurred by chance. Hypothesis testing and regression are some of the methods included in inferential statistics. Probability distribution is a statistical concept that tells you what the probability of an event happening is. All probability distributions can be classified as discrete probability distributions or as continuous probability distributions depending on whether they define probabilities associated with discrete variables or continuous variables. Given some data, you should be able to fit the data to a probability distribution. The standard normal distribution is the most commonly used continuous distribution with a shape of a bell curve. Binomial distributions and Poisson distributions are the widely used discrete distributions. The concept of hypothesis helps provide an educated guess about anything in the world around you. It can be tested by experiment or observation. For example, if a person gives counseling to patients in addition to medication, then their overall depression scale will decrease. If exam timings are changed to noon, then student test scores will improve. If the working hours in an office are increased, then employee performance will improve. If you learn data analytics from Digital Vidya, then you will be developing very hands-on job-ready skills. These statements are all hypothesis statements and they are tested using various hypothesis tests. These tests are conducted to check if the outcome of the hypothesis occurred by chance or not. If the outcomes occurred by chance, then the implemented method such as counselling of patients, change in exam timings, increasing working hours of employees are useless and do not cause the desired change. Also, these experiments are performed on a sample so these tests can also determine that the outcomes on the sample will also be the same for the whole population. Choosing the correct sample is important for these experiments. A statement such as Ravi came first in class is useless if the sample size is unknown or it loses its meaning if there were only three people in his class. Moving on to regression. It is used in statistics to find trends in data and allow people to make predictions about your data by providing an equation for a graph. For example, if you've been putting on weight over the last few years, it can predict how much you'll weigh in 10 years time if you continue to put on weight at the same rate. It involves fitting a line to a set of points, which is called the regression line. Using the equation of this regression line, new values can be predicted. A quantity called an R-squared value is used in regression, which will tell you how good the fitting of the line to the data points is. The values range from 0 to 1, with 0 being a terrible fit and 1 being a perfect fit. You can model rising temperatures due to global warming using regression and even predict the average temperatures for future years. With clustering, you can group data into clusters based on their similarity. Using this method, the subjects in the same cluster have more similar characteristics than subjects which are not in the same cluster. An example where this is used is in the field of medicine where the patients are grouped into clusters based on their symptoms and the appropriate therapy is given accordingly. There are multiple ways for creating segments or clusters, including hierarchical clustering and density-based clustering. The most commonly used method of clustering is k-means clustering, which divides the subjects into k number of clusters by running these two steps repeatedly. The first one is to calculate Euclidean distance between each subject and cluster centers. Then, each point is assigned to one of the K clusters 
which has the minimum distance. The second step is updating cluster centers by taking the mean of all points assigned to the cluster. After a set number of iterations, the subjects are assigned to their appropriate cluster. The statistical technique K nearest neighbors is used to estimate or classify a new subject based on properties of similar subjects. For example, if you want to rent your house, you can decide the rent price by finding the five most similar houses, taking the mean of their rents and setting the rent of your house to the mean. The nearest neighbors of a new subject are found by finding the Euclidean distance of all other subjects from the new subjects and selecting K subjects having the smallest distance. K nearest neighbors is the most easy to implement algorithm. As a result, many data scientists refer to it as the lazy algorithm. So, we looked at some of the important inferential statistics concepts. These concepts help in making inferences from the data. Statistics is the art of asking right questions, coming up with methods of finding the answers and quantifying the correctness of those answers. Therefore, if you wish to become a successful data scientist, it is important that you learn it.